Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Here's little Cosmo's little face. He of course wants to have his cameo. Anyway, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a romance recommendation video for you and these are some of my favorite books I've read this year that have sweet, kind, loving, caretaking almost type of heroes where they are not pushovers, they're not like weak men at all. Some of these men are very protective and sometimes they can come across a little grumpy at first, but when everything is revealed, these are just the best men who love and adore their women, do sweet, wonderful, caring things, and just like their greatest desire is to take care of her. Like, it's just my favorite thing. It's my favorite type of hero. It's my favorite type of romance to read. So I thought I would put together a list of some that I think are favorites and that really, really exemplify what I'm looking for when I want a sweet hero type of romance. So the first book that I want to talk about is Finding Jean Kelly by Tori Jean. This book is, this is her debut and it is fantastic. I adored this book so much. I read an arc of this and I did an interview with the author, and it was just fantastic. I love this book so much. This book has endometriosis representation in it, and that's a big part of the plot and what moves the story forward. Tori herself has endometriosis, and I do, and that's why I, one of the reasons why I was so anxious to get my hands on this, because I have never read really well done endo, endo representation in a romance book, and it was perfection in here. The basic premise of this book is our heroine, Evie, who has struggled with endo her whole entire life. It's a huge part of her story. It's a huge part of the plot in here. And she ends up moving to Paris where she kind of wants to break away from her mother who constantly makes her feel like she's not good enough and spe in specific ways that have to do with her chronic illness. So when she's in Paris, she also has a love for baking and for traveling. And so she has this blog, she's creating recipes, she loves food, she loves life. And she ends up meeting Liam, who is the hero, Liam Kelly. They knew each other in high school, and they had, like, this spark and what Evie thought was going to be, like, some chemistry or something growing and developing there. And then they, of course, had some miscommunication that happened that caused her to believe that he didn't like her, that he was making fun of her, that he was cruel to her. And that was definitely not the case. But when they end up meeting in this book, she's very, very wary of him and almost a little bit bitter and doesn't really want to have anything to do with him. She doesn't trust him. And so he kind of has to break down her barriers. And he does that in a lot of ways by taking care of her, by being very sensitive and understanding of her needs. Like he gets her her heating pad, like he brings her food. Like he is just one of the sweetest men I have ever read about. And I adored him. I loved their romance. I loved obviously the end of representation, but I truly just enjoyed this as a romance. I really loved the setting too. Like it's set in Paris. It feels very luxurious in that way. And I just adored it. But truly the hero Liam is so freaking sweet and everything he does is for Evie's happiness and I just like I just loved him I loved him so much this was a really fun book I thoroughly enjoyed it and I recommend this to everyone okay and another book that I want to recommend is The One Who Loves You this is a Kindle Unlimited romance that I read earlier this year and I thoroughly enjoyed it it does have a lot of pretty common like tropes it's a small town romance, but our heroine, what is her name? I wrote them down this time, Phoebe. Phoebe is the heroine and she comes from a very wealthy family. She, like her grandmother is like at the helm of just wealth and privilege for this family. And she is definitely a spoiled girl. And usually that is a big turnoff for me. Like I struggle with heroines like that. I just don't want to read about spoiled little rich girls living their privileged life. You know, like it's just not for me. Unless I feel like there's a little bit of added depth to the heroine where she kind of has to struggle and overcome that. So something happens with her family, her very rich family. Her grandmother has a near-death experience and she's like, you know what? I think we need to live like the poor people or like the normal people do. So they go to this small town and they're going to sort of just learn to live normally. And like, I know, I know it sounds like a Hallmark movie, but it was, it was so good and so enjoyable. And like, I didn't even mind. I didn't even mind. I loved the tropiness of it. I just thought it was a really fun time. So they go to this small town and Phoebe ends up meeting this very gruff, grumpy hero. His name is Teague. 
he is a definitely like a man's man like he does works with his hands and things like that and he is also a single dad and he has a teenage daughter and I really loved the teenage daughter and Phoebe's relationship too and these two Phoebe and Teague like they have so much chemistry and you can just sort of see the way that they're that she wants to trust him and she wants to have something happen with him but she is a little bit wary and she and he's very wary of her because he's like is she just a spoiled rich girl and you know like he's he's been hurt <laughs> and he wants to make sure that his heart is protected so he's wary so there's that wariness but of course like the chemistry can't be denied and they end up of course falling in love and it was just so fun like this book was just so much fun it was very comforting it was just really enjoyable and this hero he's a great dad like he is such a good dad I love a single dad romance but he just adored this woman and he was so sweet with her like so when even though he starts out a little bit gruff and grumpy he ends up just being the biggest sweetheart and I just I loved it this was such a fun book and I really enjoyed it Okay, the next book that I want to recommend is Bet on It. This is a traditionally published romance. I did read an arc of this earlier this year, and the thing that really impressed me with this book was it's it's hugely focused on mental health. Like there's a big mental health representation aspect to this book, and it, I I would think I would say that the anxiety representation and the focus of that and the characters is probably at equal, if not even a little bit more weight than the romance, but the romance is definitely there. And the romance is built because these two characters, it's a Asia, Asia and Walker, I'm not sure if I'm saying her name right, Asia and Walker, they have this moment in the beginning where they meet in a Piggly Wiggly and Asia is in the middle of a panic attack. And she is having this panic attack she doesn't really know what to do and walker who also has panic attacks and anxiety sort of comes to the day and offers her comfort and aid in that moment and it was just a really beautiful meet cute i thought it was so sweet and so well done and these two become friends they talk about some of their not necessarily shared trauma but like their shared mental health struggles that they have and they also end up having this big attraction for one another and I love that so much because the heroine is a plus size woman, she's a black woman, he's a white man, and the way that he just completely was captivated by her beauty and her lush figure and just wanted her so much was just absolutely beautiful. But they end up entering into like a sex pact basically, they go both play bingo <laughs> with their grandmothers and Walker's there to visit his grandmother. He's been away for a long time and so he's trying to come back and take care of her because, you know, she's getting old and he wants to be there for her. And so they enter into this like sex pact and that I think will draw a lot of readers. But the thing that I really loved about this was just the way that the hero was so sweet and tender with her and also very supportive. And I think that's illustrated very much from their first op opening scene when they meet. When he sees her, he knows, he recognizes the signs of a panic attack and he's going to help her in a way that isn't like overbearing but is very considerate and thoughtful and I just and that is the tone of his character through the whole book so I enjoyed this I thought it was a really sweet romance and specifically the hero is very very sweet okay now I could not have a sweet romance hero book recommendation video without one of my favorite books of the year which is A Lady for a Duke by Alexis Hall oh my gosh this book this book is just it's just so good it's so good I want everyone to read it so badly because the way that this book made me feel had made me feel so much hope for love and being yourself and finding acceptance with the person who loves you, who you love the most, was just, just so good. But the basic premise of this book is Viola, our heroine, she is a trans woman. She was presumed dead in the Battle of Waterloo. And because people believe that she's dead, she has this moment where she realizes she can be whoever she wants to be. She doesn't have to hide behind who she doesn't believe that she is or who she doesn't feel to be and so she embraces this opportunity to be a trans woman and she starts living her life like that and Justin the Duke was best friends with Viola before during before the war before he believes that she passed away and so he is deeply affected by the loss of his friend who he believes to be dead so when him and Viola meet, they have this moment where it's almost like two souls meeting one another again, two souls that like recognize each other, even though he doesn't realize Viola is his friend. And when he does know that and he accepts Viola for who she is and loves her, it's just a thing of beauty. Like the Duke himself, Justin, he's a very tortured, very damaged hero, but he never lets that affect his desire to 
help and share intimacy with Viola, help and care and support her and just be there for her. And I think if I, if I'm talking about like a sweet romance hero, I think one of the big things that defines that is loving and accepting that person for who they are. And that is exactly what Justin did here. This book was so sweet, like achingly romantic. If I had a handful of books to tell you are achingly romantic, it would be this one. Just absolutely beautiful. The sweetest hero, the sweetest love story. And I just adored it so much. <laughs> okay, now the next book that I want to talk about is Worth Fighting For. So this book is a historical romance. I read this earlier this year. This is a new to me author. And I adored this book. I thought it was fantastic. This is only available as an ebook, so you can't buy a physical copy of it, sadly. The, I talked to the author actually about that because I was like, I really want a physical copy of this book. And she's like, well, I have to sell so many copies of my ebook before I'm able to do because she's with a small press. So everybody go buy this book and read it so we can get a physical copy because I love it. So anyway, this is a historical romance and our heroine is Catherine and she is now a widow. She's a baroness. Her husband was very cruel to her and very abusive, and she really was crushed. Her spirit was a little bit crushed under his rule, I guess, because they were married, and he was definitely the type of man who wanted her under his thumb and wanted to control her. So he passes away, and now she is presented with not only this estate and these funds, but also the freedom for the first time to do what she wanted. And she decides to be to train horses and breed horses, and she becomes this very famous and really well thought of, even though she's a woman, horse trainer and horse breeder. But there is, of course, the concern of a new baron coming in and taking over the estate. So she knows that even though she has her own money from this horse business, she knows a new baron, someone in the line, is going to come over and take over the land and the estate. And that ends up being Alex, who is an American man, and he comes to England to take over to be the new baron, and he is just gobsmacked by Catherine. He is the type of man that is not intimidated by a strong woman, and I dearly love that, but he's also not intimidated by what a savvy businesswoman she is and how she's really sort of running things and has the sense of independence, where I think that it's so typical to see or hear about men in this era who are very turned off by that. And Alex was just like, wow. And maybe it is because he's American, like I wonder how much that plays into how he was so accepting of her. Anyway, he just like was sort of gobsmacked by this strong, powerful, confident, now confident woman. And he's just like, I want her. So again, they have this very fierce, powerful connection, this great chemistry. And she feels it too. And so they decide to enter into a physical relationship only. Of course, nobody's going to catch feelings. Uh, they do, for sure, they do. And it is interesting because it is definitely the hero who catches feelings first and is wanting to take things to the next level and she is understandably hesitant to give herself in marriage and to lose the sense of power that she has right now so it was just really really beautiful I think that this hero could be kind of gruff at times but the overruling desire of his heart was to take care of her and to make sure that she had what she wanted and what she worked for and there were moments shared between them that were just extremely sweet and lovely. And I just thought this book was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And I want more people to read it because very few people have. And I think this is an author to watch. I definitely look forward to reading more books from her. Okay, so another book that I have is Art and Soul by Brittany C. Cherry. So this is a Brittany C. Cherry book that I don't often see talked about. This one is so sweet and so romantic. And I think Brittany C. Cherry is often known for having like grumpy heroes. I think that in a lot of her more popular books, she has a grumpy hero. This hero, this hero, his name is Levi, is so sweet and so accepting and so loving. Like that's a big theme of a sweet romance hero is someone, I, I probably said this before, I'm so sorry. I still sort of have a little bit of brain fog. I had COVID last week, by the way, I'm fine. I'm fine, but it wasn't a cold, it was COVID. So anyway, Levi, is sweet and his greatest desire is to help and take care of the heroine and to accept her for who she is and that's a huge part of this book because the heroine is at, they're actually teenagers in this book but it feels very adult it doesn't feel like a YA at all these are teenagers who are experiencing a romance and it's not steamy though so just in case that <laughs> that is something that would make your decision if you're going to read this like I think you should read it because it's sweet and lovely and beautiful and I'm recommending it so obviously I think you should read it but anyway I digress so Levi becomes friends with Aria the heroine and Aria is a teenage girl 
she is sort of known as the art student who's kind of like outcast, like nobody really wants to be friends with her. She finds this guy, not the hero, to who she thinks is accepting her. And she's like so hungry, so thirsty for that feeling of being accepted and seen by somebody that of course she decides to have sex with him and he ends up completely dropping her. She gets pregnant and Levi then sees her for who she is. He sees her and he loves and accepts her and it was just so beautiful and lovely and romantic and I adored it. It's a very quick read. It's not very long but it was just so sweet and lovely and the sweetest hero probably that I've ever read from Brittany C. Cherry. Okay, now the last book that I have to recommend is Rushed. Now, this is a, another Kindle Unlimited romance. I recently read this. This is this is a small town romance. And again, this is one of those that has a lot of tropes of small town romances. But they all worked for me. This was very entertaining. This was very fun. But by far and away, the highlight of this book for me was the sweet hero. Like, he was so sweet. He just adored the heroine. He wanted her to be happy. He wanted to sacrifice and do everything for her. Like, he just adored her. And I loved him for that. I loved it so much. So this book is basically about Sybil, who was engaged, and her fiancé kind of, like, dropped her, completely dropped her, and she's now alone, and she's not sure what's going on. Her and her fiancé had this, like, marriage retreat, outdoor retreat planned they were, they were going to go to, and she's like, well... I guess I'll go by myself. So she goes to this like outdoorsy type of marriage retreat by herself. And of course she meets and falls in love with Tanner, who is one of the co-owners and sort of like a guide. And you know, Tanner has all these rules in place. And one of them is definitely like, don't kiss any of the guests and just certainly don't fall in love with them. But of course, of course he does. But this book was a little bit on the side of insta love, but it didn't bother me at all. And I think that's just largely because of the hero. Like he was just such a sweet hero. So many things happen in this book. So many events happen. And through them all, his greatest desire was just to see her and to take care of her and to love her and cherish her. And like, what more can you ask for? You know, I mean, we, we love it. We love that in our heroes. So all right, there you have it. Those are some of the best uh, sweet heroes in romance that I've read recently, and I, I just wanted to recommend them to you because I love them. And if you're looking for the type of hero that you can just, like, have your faith restored <laughs> in humanity and in men, like, I would recommend some of these because they're just so good. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have made it this far, please leave me just one of your favorite emojis, whatever is in your most used emojis if you're watching on your phone. I'd love to see that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in my next video.